All right. Um, I can't believe that we're being as good on time as we have been. Uh, so this is awesome. Uh, we uh, also would have been celebrating with Massonetta this year, their 100th anniversary. And uh, Shelda Wills uh, has a presentation for us. Uh, she sits on the board at Massonetta, and so she's the perfect person to, to lead us into that celebration. So Shelda? Thank you, Nancy. Those of you who know me well know that Massanetta Springs is one of my favorite places in the entire world. But before we talk about Massanetta, let's travel back in time for just a moment to the year 1922. Warren G. Harding was president of the United States. Calvin Coolidge was vice president. The term the Jazz Age was coined by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Film director Hal Roach released the first of many short features in 1922 called Our Gang. You probably don't remember that, but I'm sure you know the short features that later became known as The Little Rascals on TV, if you saw those. Walgreens introduced the malted milkshake in 1922. The hottest outside temperature ever measured on Earth was measured in Libya in 1922. The temperature was 136 degrees Fahrenheit. The first woman to serve in the United States Senate was Rebecca Latimer Felton. She was 87 years old when she took her position. She championed prison reform, women's rights, and education. The most popular Christmas gift for children in 1922 was plain doctor kits. Two of today's most popular magazines began publication in 1922, and I know you're familiar with both of them, Reader's Digest and Better Homes and Gardens. Two of the most popular movies in 1922 were Oliver Twist and Robin Hood. The first ever 3D movie was released that year. It was a silent film titled The Power of Love, and it was the first film to have an alternate ending. The viewer could choose between a happy ending and a sad ending simply by closing one eye or the other as you watch the movie. No copies exist today. I had never heard of that one before. The tomb of King Tut was discovered in 1922. That discovery made the use of eyeliner extremely popular among women. Thinking about Presbyterian women, Hallie Paxson Winsboro in 1922 challenged each member of the Women's Auxiliary of the Presbyterian Church US to give a penny for each year of her life as a birthday gift. That was the beginning of the birthday offering that we all know. And since that time, women have contributed more than $37 million to help improve lives of individuals all over the world. All of these little tidbits of information that I've just shared with you are interesting, but the most important piece of information I want to share with you today is that in 1922, Presbyterian ministry was born at the Massanetta Springs Camp and Conference Center. This special ministry at Massanetta started when a dream of Dr. William Hudson came true. Dr. Hudson, for whom Hudson Auditorium is named, wanted to establish a summer conference ground in the Shenandoah Valley. In 1922, his dream finally became a reality with the opening of what was known as the Summer Bible Conference Encampment. Through the past 100 years, Massanetta Springs has shared the gospel and God's love with people of all ages, backgrounds, races, and creeds. This year, each group affiliated with Massanetta Springs has been encouraged to take a moment to reflect, there's another R word, 
to reflect and celebrate this special place and its ministry. And we are doing just that today. As part of the centennial celebration, a short video has been created to highlight some of the events and activities that have occurred during the past 100 years at Massanetta. This video is literally hot off the press. In fact, we're the first group to view it. Our loyal supporter, Rich Armstrong, is going to share that video with us now. Rich. It's working. There we go. My passion for Massinetta is rooted in the past. In 2022, Massinetta Spring celebrates 100 years of ministry. For an entire century, this outstanding camp and conference center has provided vibrant summer camp experiences for children and youth, young adult ministry, and leadership development for all ages. But our history goes back even before 1922. In 1893, records show the post office located on our site was designated as the Massanetta Springs Post Office. Dr. Burke Chrisman, proprietor of a small hotel and resort at Massanetta, was said to have combined the local place name Massanutton with the name of Dr. Chrisman's wife, Henrietta, to arrive at Massanetta. The first Presbyterian presence at Massanetta began in 1919 when Hampton Sydney College purchased the property and in the summer of 1922, the very first Massanetta Springs summer Bible encampment took place. And the rest, as they say, is history. From those early days, our ministry grew adding programs and Camp Massanetta in 1956. But our history is not without difficulty. The late 1970s into the 1980s proved difficult years, so much so that Massanetta Springs was entirely closed from January 1st, 1989, until through the hard work of the Friends of Massanetta, it was reopened in August of 1991. Since reopening, Massanetta has continued to serve God through the ministries of camp, retreat, conference, and hospitality. Ministry at Massanetta Springs includes conferences, worship, music education, Bible study, leadership development, continuing educations, and opportunities to develop strong, lasting relationships with people from all over the nation and from all walks of life. I see the ministry expanding to different groups. Our hospitality can expand to so many non-traditional Presbyterian groups, we have that opportunity. Massanetta Springs is unique in the way that it develops leadership, especially among youth. Since 1993, the Middle School Conference has welcomed young people to experience the love and grace of Jesus Christ, while also developing the Christian leadership skills of high schoolers, many who have gone on into professional ministry, or are committed elders, deacons, and members at their local churches. From the very first summer Massanetta Springs came into being, the Bible and church music conferences have empowered the hearts, minds, and spirits of those who seek spiritual enrichment. I think one of the things that makes Massanetta so special is that you can start coming here as a little kid and keep finding ways to come back for years and years and years. So you create connections with people and with this place. For the future 
is in the dynamic sharing of faith in the newest ways that can be achieved on hallowed ground, but with a newness and a vitality of experience and an enthusiasm and an effectiveness of ways of sharing ministry that haven't been dreamed about. While we celebrate the past hundred years, we are excited about the future. In 2019, Netta Day Camp was launched and is now filling Camp Massanetta with the sound of children playing, praying, and learning. 2022, we'll see a new fall conference for high schoolers with an eye to helping them put feet to their faith and make a difference in God's world. With so many faithful people creating our present, we are prayerfully but boldly stepping into the future of this place. At Massanetta, we anticipate the next 100 years to be filled with excitement, continued vision, and commitment to God's call upon our hearts, souls, and faithful leadership. There is a big future for Massanetta Springs in God's kingdom. Thank you, Rich, and uh, everyone else who helped out there. Thanks for your patience as we um, work with this as well. Those old photos are priceless, I think. Uh, you may have seen someone that you recognized. Those of you who are normally there for the summer gathering probably uh, recognized uh, Pat Valentine and Joan Clemmer. They're the ones that are always there as we enter the dining room. And of, of course, many of you know. Um, Clayton Rasco, the executive director too. And there may have been others that you recognized. What a wonderful way to show us some of Massanetta's history. Now let me share some info with you about this centennial celebration. The theme for this year's celebration is gather, celebrate, serve for the last century and the next. We as Presbyterian women, can definitely identify with that theme, to gather, celebrate, serve. We gather as Presbyterian women, even if we must gather virtually as we are doing this summer. We celebrate as Presbyterian women, especially as we greet one another, renew former acquaintances and make new friends. We serve as Presbyterian women, especially with our many mission projects just like our mission project for Haiti this year. As Presbyterian women working together, we fulfill Massanetta's centennial theme to gather, celebrate, serve. The scripture selected for the centennial is Isaiah chapter 12, verse three. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. What a perfect scripture to emphasize the iconic Massanetta Spring House that we all love so much. In fact, the Centennial Celebration Committee has designed a commemorative ornament for the Centennial that showcases the Massanetta Spring House. Now, Susan had a commercial earlier this morning, and so I'm gonna have a commercial too. Uh, if you can see this, this is the um, spring house, the, the ornament rather of the spring house and on the back, it has the information with the logo uh, for the celebration, the PCUSA logo, uh, 1922 to 2022. And you can purchase this just by contacting Massanetta. The price is $18, end of commercial. Now, because this ministry started as a Bible conference encampment, it seemed only fitting to throw the big party during the Bible and Church Music Conference this year. This year that uh, will take place July 24 through 30. Now the really, really, really big party will take place on Centennial Day, which will be Wednesday, July 27. Again, that's Wednesday, July 27. The day's highlights will include a Bible study led by Dr. Christine Roy Yoder from Columbia Theological Seminary. 
a forum on Massanetta's history led by the Reverend Dr. Fred Holbrook and Laura Holbrook, an afternoon workshop led by the Reverend John Bell of the Iona community, and an evening worship service with John Bell preaching. Following that worship service, a party is being planned on the lawn in front of the hotel. You can register for the entire week or just for the day by going to the Massanetta Springs website, that's massanettasprings.org, or simply calling Massanetta. You do not want to miss this opportunity to celebrate all that Massanetta Springs has done for the past 100 years, all that Massanetta is doing right now in the present, and all that Massanetta will continue to do in the future. Now, if we had been able to be at Massanetta this year for our summer gathering, we would have had flags, banners, streamers, confetti, party hats, uh, cake and ice cream, all kinds of things for the celebration. However, since that's not possible, we're doing this virtually, I want to share my celebration cake with you. So hopefully you can see this. Massanetta celebrating 100 years. So please join me in wishing Massanetta Springs Happy anniversary, happy birthday, happy centennial, happy 100 years, Massanetta. We love you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shada. Shada, before you go, could you hold up the cake again? Because I didn't get a chance to take a picture. But I want your face too, lady. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Well, we do wish that we could have been there with Massanetta to celebrate with them. Uh, they, they and we know how to throw parties, so it would have been fabulous. To, and what great pictures indeed. All right. So it's time. We're a little behind, which I knew would happen at some point. And um, so let's take our break because I know I personally need to break. And... Um, it's 1020 now. Can we be back at 1025? Just just for a little stretch and break. Does that work for everybody? Uh, we'll come back at uh, 1125. Mm. All right. Thank you. And now we move into the time of our service of remembrance. And I'm going to just pass that right along to our historian, uh, Antoinette Kelly. Good morning, or good afternoon. Adrian, can you hear me? Yes. Do I need to share? Oh, we're getting ready to go. If it has sound, don't forget to check that little tick box at the bottom of the screen so that we can hear it. Good afternoon. My name is Antoinette Kelly, historian of the Senate of the Mid-Atlantic Presbyterian Women. And on March 11, 2020, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a pandemic, which kept us apart for a while. However, today, it is good to be here amongst you, and it is indeed a privilege to be present and uplift in spirit the names of our Presbyterian women who joined the church triumph. The benches with white roses not only represent the pureness of our sister's soul and memory, but also symbolize change, transformation, and spiritual growth she has given to the PW. The list of names is extensive, and you are encouraged to reflect on them silently during the virtual presentation of each presbytery. If you are aware of any woman who are not listed, 
or have passed away from those presbyteries with no, no names submitted, you are invited to be in remembrance of them and also during the time of serenity. The 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022 necrologies will be available in the history report submitted to the Senate of the Mid-Atlantic. Please remember to mute your microphone and enjoy the virtual cloud of witnesses.
Let us pray. Almighty God, upon the cross, sorrow, pain, and the consequence of sin was overcome. We give thanks for each of our Presbyterian sisters who we remember today for all the ways in which their lives touched ours, for the difficult as well as the good times, for the ways in which their lives and their love continue to be with us. In our sadness and with thanksgiving, we will remember them. And in the world, this is still torn and, excuse me, and in the world that is still torn and broken, we declare that Jesus is Lord, that hope overcomes despair, that joy overcomes sorrow, that peace overcomes hostility, that love overcomes hate. And from the tomb, the promise of eternity emerged in a resurrected Christ. Grace was poured into the hearts of all those who suffer, mourn, and grieve. Lord, we lift our hearts to you and continue to remember, to hope, 
and to love. Amen. That was very moving, Tony. Thank you so much. And I know that uh, the other person to say thank you to is Adrian Knight, our Synod Rep, who helped uh, Tony with that presentation. And as any service of remembrance is going to have omissions, uh, not because we didn't love these ladies, but because they just didn't get received in time and uh but they are in our hearts and they're in our minds and uh it was a, a beautiful presentation and i was wondering how you were going to do this and you, you did not uh, you did beautifully so thank you and there's always time to give tony any additional names uh, from your presbyterian women who were not shown on the screen but will be remembered in in our history and in our necrology. So thank you. I know that you've worked very hard on this. And, uh, and, well, a beautiful segue from our service of remembrance is to go right into a service of worship of that Christ who is where we see our source of hope and promise. So Kathy. Back on, please. Thank you, Nancy. And uh, just by way of um, introducing how we're, we'll be doing worship today, I will um, begin with a scripture reading and a very brief reflection, and then Colleen will preside over the Lord's Supper. So listen now to the words of scripture as found in the Gospel of Luke chapter 13, verses 6 through 9, and then 18 to 21. Then he, Jesus, told this parable. <clears throat> a man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have, been coming, come, I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? And he replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, well, good. But if not, then you can cut it down. Then Jesus said, What is the kingdom of God like? And to what should I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in the garden. It grew and became a tree and the birds of the air made their nests in its branches. And again he said, To what should I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The world has changed in so many ways over the past two years because of COVID-19. When we were advised to go into lockdown because of this contagious, deadly, and rapidly spreading virus, I was grateful that I lived in Manistee, a half a mile away from Lake Michigan. Just because we had been advised to isolate and stay home if we could, I could still walk to the beach and enjoy my beautiful surroundings. And after a while, we found ways to be with our friends, whether it was outside in the fresh air or on Zoom. We never imagined that we would still be having to live with COVID for longer than two years. It seems that no matter where we lived or what we did, we had to adapt. Hospitals had to adapt to caring for seriously ill and infectious patients in overcrowded conditions and businesses had to adapt to having people work from home, if at all. We had to adapt to wearing masks and being socially distant from, one, from each other, 
No more touching or hugging anyone outside your household. And I am quite sure that each one of you can think of many other ways that we have had to adapt. Presbyterian women had to adapt to finding ways to gather without being together in person. Zoom made it possible for us to at least see each other on a screen so that we could continue to be in community. We were concerned about PW sisters who were alone with no way to connect online. We reached out to each other the best we could while in lockdown that seemed to last forever. And some of us wondered how the organization Presbyterian Women could survive. Things were not looking entirely bright for us. The good news is that I think that we have opportunities to build a stronger and better PW. Out of crisis comes good things. Looking to scripture to find reassurance during the time of COVID, I found hope in our scripture for today. In the parables, Jesus' parables about the barren fig tree, the mustard seed, and the yeast. Those parables make me feel hopeful. The parable of the barren fig tree tells us not to give up, to keep trying. At the same time, if some of the ways that we do things no longer bear fruit, perhaps it is time to let them go. The parable of the mustard seed reminds me that, that the Presbyterian Women Organization is like the seed planted by women many years ago as they sought to serve in the church any way they could. The women who planted the Presbyterian seed probably never imagined that through the ministry they began, there would be great hospitals and schools throughout the world serving millions of people. And many lives have been improved because of our commitment to participating in God's mission to the world. And just like the woman who made sure that all the flour was leavened by the yeast so that the dough would rise to make bread that would feed many, many may, may Presbyterian women provide the yeast that will grow our ministry so that many more people will experience life in the fullness of God's amazing grace. As we gather around this table together, today to celebrate the Lord's Supper, we are reminded that Christ promised to be with us whenever two or more are gathered together in his name. We also celebrate the community of women that is Presbyterian women and all the ways that God has blessed us and our community and our ministry. So let us not give up. Let us celebrate the good that we have done and let us nurture our beloved Presbyterian women so that we will grow. Amen. Greetings, friends. It is a joy to be with you all today. I'm so grateful for the many women who have come before me in our church, planting seeds and preparing yeast and pruning branches to make space for my own faith and leadership. It certainly does feel like an eternity since we've all gathered together like normal in person. But today, we've chosen to be with one another through the graciousness of the internet to learn and celebrate and honor and remember and grow. No matter where we are calling in from today, we are connected to this community of strong women leaders in our church and world. Wherever you are today, sitting at a desk or on a couch or maybe in an office or at church or even at home, we gather together at one big table, the table set by God. We're taking communion virtually, so make sure you have nearby something bread-like and a cup of something, maybe some juice or water. It's strange and hard to share in something meant to be so communal when we're all so spread apart. Many of us are sitting alone today or maybe with only a few people. So this liturgy is specifically designed to remind us that we are all together, 
not only in our work as Presbyterian women, but in our faith and in our lives. So in the liturgy, I'll leave some moments of silence where I invite you to unmute yourself or use the chat. You've shown me you're great at doing both of those things. Uh, and if you use the chat, I'll read it out loud for you. But this way we can all participate in telling the story of God's love for us in Jesus Christ. So we'll take a quick moment, just one last practice of that mute button and the chat, and we'll pass the peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. 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 Perfect. I knew you could do this. It's going to be a little bit noisy and chaotic, but that's okay. Let it be a reminder of the Holy Spirit within us and among us in this wonderful community of Presbyterian women and friends. So wherever your own table is, we gather at one big table, the table set by God where all are welcome. We gather with love, with gratitude and joy, and we welcome the many memories that have happened at our own tables and other tables. Around these tables, we have dreamed of a church and world at peace. Around these tables, we let laughter and heartache and planning happen as we break bread together. We have gathered before, in person and in spirit. So now let us gather here with one another on Zoom and prepare our own spirits to encounter the fellowship of the Holy Spirit once again. Let us pray. It feels like almost an eternity since we've gathered all together in person, dear God. Yet even apart, we gather online and in spirit with the faithful of every time and place to sing your glory. We praise you for the saints of every age, and especially the saints we've honored together today, for their faithful witness to the risen Christ, for following and proclaiming Jesus' example of love and peace. The Lord be with you all. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us remember the beginning of our story with God. How did it begin? God created. God created. It began with light. Through the union of Robert and Cora Massey. Love. It began on a mountaintop. It began with baptism. It began with love. Peace. Peace. Vacation Bible School. Yes. Thanks be to God. Then the people were led by prophets and by teachers. Who have these prophets and teachers been for us? Pastors. Mr. Mr. Wilson. Grandfathers. Parents. Sunday school teachers, choir teachers, leaders, sisters, Marie Adams, mom and dad, Mr. Rogers and his helpers, <laughs> Reverend Dr. Willie Woodson, amen, Barbara Madison, ministers, parents, Presbyterian women, Bibles. Reverend Katie Cannon. Amen. Oh. Flo Shrestley. Thanks be to God. But even still, we couldn't find our way in the world. The world was still broken. Let us remember together the sorrows of our world. Ukraine. 
Injustice. Hate. Hunger. Gun violence. Gun violence. Mass um, shootings. Incarceration. Hate. Unemployment. Hatred. Broken yes. families. Homeless. Baltimore, victims of domestic violence, mass shootings, income inequality. Killing of innocent babies. Oh, oh wow. wow. Climate change. Mm. Haiti. Yes. Incarceration. God and political division. Yes. Mental health stigma. Mm. Yes. But even through our sin and trouble, God came to be with us on earth through Jesus. What was Jesus' ministry like? Love, uplifting, inclusive, joy. others, joy, Forgiveness. acceptance, openness, peaceful, forgiveness. Merciful. Yes. Healing. Mm. Fellowship. Kindness. Yeah. Jesus taught and loved and healed women. Okay. Acceptance. And in his ministry, Jesus taught us together, praying, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven. In heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And then the night when Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with those closest to him around a table, just like ours. And he took the bread and he took the cup. Let us remember together what he said. I don't want all this money thing, who knows? You break it in two. He said, break it. <laughs> break what it else did he say at that table? Here's, here's my head. This is my body. This is the cup of the new covenant. Broken for you. Broken for you. you. He said love to all. Mm -hmm. Jesus gave thanks and he said, this is my body given for you. Whenever you eat of it, do this in remembrance of me. Yes. And in the same way, he took the cup and said, this is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. And then Jesus' followers ate together as the people of God called to be like Jesus. So we eat together too. Yep. Gracious God, pour out your spirit on these gifts of bread and cup, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be his body for the world. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Break bread and eat, friends. And while you're enjoying these gifts, let us pray. We give you thanks, eternal God, that you have fed us with these gifts of bread and cup. Fill us also with your vision of a more just and peaceful world where all might have life abundantly and all might share in that leadership. Bless these women and their friends, O oh God, and help us all to reflect your love, O oh God, and Christ's peace and the Holy Spirit's unity in our church and in our world. Amen. 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 Thank you. Beautifully done. Thank you. Thank you Amen. for doing that.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. It's been great to be with you all today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming these two days. It has been a, indeed a blessing to be in your presence, and uh, I look forward to more opportunities to, to be with, as I've been saying, my peeps in the oh, Synod of the Mid-Atlantic. So, ladies, okay. let us end with this prayer. My PW sisters, go out into the world, be the ears, eyes, shoulders, heart, mouth, hands, feet, and the light of Christ through compassion and giving hope and love and peace. And may God help us to be the people that God would like us to be out in the world. In Jesus' name, I pray and I bid you good afternoon and stay well until we meet again. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>